Okay, in this video, we are going to look at external interrupts on the AVR mecha controllers. Now, I'm using Arduino Nano, which has a NatMega 320p mecha controller. Now, all mecha controllers can only do one thing at a time, one task at a time, so we use interrupts to make it look like that we're doing more than one thing at a time. So, right now, I have a program running. It's blinking the LED on pin 8 of the Nano, and also have a beeper and a, another LED connected to pin 13 of the Nano and I have a push button switch connected to pin 3 of the Nano. So right now my main program is running. It's blinking the LED on pin 8. Now I want to toggle my beeper and my LED connected to pin 13. So I have to generate an interrupt by using my push button switch. So when I press the push button switch it's going to generate an interrupt and it's going to toggle my LED and my beeper. So I'm interrupting the main program and toggling the beeper and my uh, LED on pin 13. You can see it's not really affecting my main program. But every time I interrupt my main program, it's taking a little bit of time from it, from the main program, to generate my interrupt. Okay, when I press on my push button, I'm generating a rising edge into pin 3 of my Nano. And when I release the push button, I'm generating a falling edge into the pin 3 of my Nano. So right now I have my interrupt configured as a falling edge trigger. So when I release my push button, it's going to trigger my interrupt, as you can see. Now I can make it so a rising edge will trigger my interrupt. So now when I press the push button, on the rising edge, on the press input, it's going to trigger my interrupt. So we have a choice of rising or falling edge to trigger our interrupt. Okay, when I press the push button switch and generate an interrupt, I'm tapping the shoulder on the microcontroller and I'm saying, hey, could I interrupt you for a bit? I need to run some code, it's very urgent. So the microcontroller will say, okay, I'll stop my main program and I'll run your interrupt service routine. Then I'll go back to the same spot where I was interrupted and continue on as if nothing happened. Okay, when I interrupted the microcontroller by tapping on its shoulder, I was using pin 3 of the Nano. Now pin 3 of the Nano is PD3 on the microcontroller. So the microcontroller looks up PD3 and sees an external interrupt, interrupt 1. So it says there's some external device out there interrupting me on PD3, so it's going to be an interrupt 1 external interrupt. So it goes to a vector table, which is basically a big jump table, and it sees interrupt 1 is vector number 3. So at address number 4, address 4 in a flash, we have to put in our jump address. We have to put in the address of our interrupt service routine. So now the, so now the microcontroller will change its program counter to that address and it will jump to our interrupt service routine, run, run the routine, then it will go back to the same spot where it was before it was interrupted and continue on. Okay, here's the code running in my Nano to set up my interrupt. Now the code is written in fourth. I'm using flash fourth. So the first thing we have to do we have to create our interrupt service routine. So I call it ISR. And the code that's going to run is pin 13 toggle. So we test that out. We make sure that it's, it's running properly. Then uh, we set up another word called init interrupt request. So we take the execution address of our interrupt service routine, which would be right here. That will, take, that will, that will extract the address, the execution address of the ISR. And it will, it will put it into vector 3 a flash and that will store it. Then we configure it as a rising edge trigger for our interrupt and then we enable our interrupt number one. So just by typing in, in, in it inter, interrupt request we'll run all this code and that will enable our interrupt and the push button switch on our Nano will trigger our interrupt and toggle pin 13 on the Arduino Nano. Okay I'm going to show you a little trick that I use when I'm building external interrupts. Now normally we use a push button switch to test external interrupts but we have to have some kind of contact bound circuitry so we have a clean uh, rising or falling edge into our microcontroller so we don't have multiple interrupts. So instead of using a switch and using a circuit for a contact bounds we can elim eliminate all that and we could actually use the microcontroller to trigger the external interrupt. So I'll show you how you do that. It'll make it a lot simpler that you don't have to build uh, any hardware circuit with a push button switch and any type of contact bounce circuitry. Okay, here's a schematic diagram 
of one of the GPIO pins on our Arduino Nano. And here's our pin here, so this will be our pin 3. So normally we would make pin 3 an input for our interrupt detect. So as our pulse comes into pin 3, it's going to come down here and it's going to go into the data bus. Now if we configure pin 3 as an output, and we send an output to pin 3, it's going to originate from the data bus and it's going to come out this way and straight out to the pin. Now normally we have pin 3 as an input, but if we make pin 3 as an output, the input is still going to be active. So if we make pin 3 an output and we send a pulse out of pin 3 as output, it's going to come down here and it's going to come back on itself and come back here to the data bus and trigger the interrupt. So we, we don't need external switches or contact bound circuitry. We could just send pulses out our output port of pin 3 and it will, it will go back into the input through this path here. And that will save us building a circuitry with a, with a hardware switch and a contact bound circuitry. Okay, I have my interrupt service routine enabled on the Nano and I configured pin 3 as an output. So now when I send a pulse out pin 3, it's going to come back into the input and trigger the interrupt. And I mapped it to one of the keys on the keyboard, so every time I press the key on the keyboard, I'll send a positive pulse out pin 3, which will come back into the input and trigger the interrupt. So if I press the key on the keyboard, you can see I could toggle pin 13 and toggle my beeper. That's just a little trick that I use, so I don't need to build an external switch or any type of contact bounce circuitry. It just makes it a lot simpler to do it from the keyboard. Okay, so that was my little primer on interrupts for the AVR microcontrollers. Now this same technique can be used on other microcontrollers. They're very similar. You build your ISR, then you put the execution address in a vector table or jump table. So I was using the fourth operating system, the fourth programming language, to build my interrupts. So it makes it a lot easier because it's interactive, but you could use any language of your choice. But the thing is to get into there and actually build one, get into the data sheets, build uh, your little ISR, and make it so you can interrupt it, either through a hardware push-button switch, or you can use my little trick and use a keyboard and do it by software. So I'll just give you some ideas how to build your own little interrupt circuitry so you can test out your own interrupts.